Um, hard to believe it was 22 years ago to the date that the events of September 11th, 2001 transpired. And one thing that I want you guys to learn from these events, you know, it's funny, when I first started teaching, the students I was teaching would tell me, I was four or five years old, I do remember a little bit, I remember the concern in my parents' faces, uh, I knew something bad had happened, I didn't fully understand what it was. Uh, and then it became, hey, Mr. Akira, I was one or two years old, you know, I really don't remember. Uh, and then eventually got to the point where we are now, where my students would say, hey, Mr. Akira, I wasn't born in 2001. I was your age. I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, I was at 2200 Market Street, the old Bishop McDevitt High School down there uh, in the city. And uh, I was in my English class. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. I mean, blue sky, gorgeous fall day. And I was getting ready to take an English uh, quiz. Uh, it was on Shakespearean theater, the Globe Theater, things like that. Uh, I remember the student in front of me, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, was freaking out because he's like, Jim, I didn't study for the test, Jim, I don't know any of this stuff. And I was like, ah, you know, I don't know what, what you want me to tell you. Uh, I'm still friends with that individual to this day. Uh, and I still remember vividly that he sat in front of me in that class. I sat in the back row uh, of the center aisle. Uh, the windows were open, fresh air coming in at the old school. Uh, you could see the old football field, what was called the rock pile out the back window of this classroom. It was a beautiful view. It was one of my favorite rooms in the old building. And I'm sitting back there casually getting ready to take my quiz as my teacher, Sister Jude, uh, uh, my English teacher in British Studies, was passing the quiz out when all of a sudden the principal, Mr. Brixius, you guys know Mr. Brixius, he helps out around the school here currently, uh, comes over to the loudspeaker. And he says that um, a plane has crashed into one of the World Trade Centers in New York City. Uh, we will let you know more when we know more. And so I remember the teacher saying, you know, hey, please you know, pass up the quizzes. This is no time for a test. Uh, let's turn on the TV and see what's going on. And in my mind, I thought there was some kind of an accident. I thought, you know, maybe a plane leaving from LaGuardia or JFK Airport lost control, engine failure, and maybe clipped one of the World Trade Buildings, which are huge, huge buildings, uh, uh, on its way down. Uh, never in a million years did I expect that I was going to see what I saw next. And one thing that is forever cemented in my mind uh, is when we turned on the TV shortly thereafter, my class watched uh, live as that second plane flew into that second tower, and immediately we knew exactly what was going on. The United States was under attack. This was a terrorist attack and a very scary time in you know, US history. And here I am living through this history, this event that no doubt is going to forever be remembered. Uh, 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 tons of monuments in New York City, Washington, DC, uh, out in Western PA, the Flight 93. Memorial, maybe some of you have gone out to see that, the brave men and women who were able to take that fourth plane down, taking their lives so that others might not be harmed in the midst of this attack. Uh, uh, um, crazy to think the number of lives that were lost that day. And two things that I take away from 9-11, two things that will always stay from me, stay with me from that day. Number one, it was just a random Tuesday. I mean, it was just a Tuesday like any other Tuesday. I was just going to school, going through my normal routine, and boom, just like that, this massive historical event that took the nation by storm, completely unexpected, completely out of the blue. And what's wild is I couldn't tell you anything about my sophomore year. Like, I couldn't say, like, I remember this date specifically or that date specifically. Even over my four years of high school, there's some things that I remember, but I couldn't tell you, oh, this was exactly this date. Or I remember exactly how this Wednesday in November of my junior year was. But I can tell you exactly what happened on that Tuesday, September 11, 2001. I can tell you the weather. I can tell you where I was. I can tell you what I was doing. Uh, I can tell you how the rest of that day went down. Ultimately, the school was put on lockdown. Uh, we had to stay in the class that we were in for the remainder of the day until ultimately they were able to organize busing to get everyone home safe. Uh, I can remember people crying, gasping, just dead silent, just couldn't believe what they were seeing. 
And life has a way of doing that to us, where we're just kind of going along with the flow, going through the motions, going through our usual routine, and just out of the blue, out of nowhere, is this life-altering event. Uh, and that is why I tell you guys all the time, every day is a gift. You never know what this life, what this world has in store for us. We never know when our day may come. And so I urge all of you, as much as we expect to have long, fruitful lives and live into our 80s and 90s, you just, you never know. And there are a lot of men and women who sadly lost their lives in those towers and in the Pentagon and on those planes that day that were just going about their normal routine. Uh, and there were many brave men and women in the fire departments, police departments, that while everybody was sprinting out of those buildings, they were sprinting in, which says a lot about how lucky we are to have the dedicated police and fire departments that are in our communities to keep us safe. The second thing that will always stick with me from 9-11 is the way that this country galvanized, the way that this country came together. It didn't matter if you were a Republican, if you were Democrat, conservative, liberal, it didn't matter your ancestry, your race, we were all Americans. And we were all under attack by this evil outside force. And we all came together to rally as Americans to stand up and defend this country that we all love so much. And one thing that I get frustrated about is that it took an event like 9-11 to really bring this country together in that fashion. That is the most united I have seen this country in my lifetime. I've never seen this country. Everybody was waving their red, white, and blue flags. Everybody was, was singing God Bless America. Everybody was doing everything they could to try and help this country to move forward uh, uh, and try to support all of the families that were grieving over the loss that took place. Uh, and it's so unfortunate that it takes an event of that magnitude to get this country to come together in that fashion. I get so frustrated when I hear all of the bickering and divisiveness that takes place on Capitol Hill in our modern society between our politicians who are supposed to be leading us and bringing us together instead of dividing us and pushing us apart. And so I hope, if anything, the events from 9-11, 22 years ago, even though you guys weren't around, from the stories you've heard, from what you know about these events, from this very famous date in American history, you know, up there with the December 7th, 1941s, right? That's a date that everybody remembers. September 11, 2001, these terrorist attacks on American soil. I hope you will remember, number one, that every day is a gift. You really never know when your day may come, and so promise me, you are making the most of every day, appreciating every day as a great blessing. And number two, I hope that today can be a reminder of what we as Americans can accomplish when we come together, when we work together for the overall good of this country, for the overall good of this world. What you can accomplish when you work with others instead of pushing others away, instead of turning your back to others, instead of judging others welcoming others, talking to others, hearing different perspectives, trying to understand different perspectives. And in this social media driven world where everybody's screaming and yelling and ranting and raving and jumping down each other's throats, I hope today can be a reminder to take a step away from all of that noise, all of that nonsense, and just realize how lucky we are to be here, to be alive, to live in this great country that gives us so many great freedoms to pursue the lives that we want to live. Uh, and hopefully, it can help bring this country together. Hopefully some good can come out of these very disturbing events that took place 22 years ago. Now I lived through those events and I wear those events like a badge of honor. I was there, I experienced it, the fear, the uncertainty. You know, a lot of people said, I'm never gonna fly again. A lot of people said, hey, when's the next attack going to come? Uh, but over time, we healed, we moved forward, uh, a couple of years ago, I couldn't believe it, on the 20th anniversary of September 11th, I was actually on a plane flying. Never in a million years did I think 20 years after September 11th, 2001, that I would be on a plane actually flying. Uh, but that shows you that time does enable us to move forward. Uh, uh, time does enable us to heal some of the wounds that may have transpired. 
Uh, and we need to continue to move forward as a country from those events, learn from them, uh, and strive to be better in the years to come. Now, you guys lived through COVID-19, and I'm here to tell you there are going to be other events of that magnitude during your lifetime. My parents lived through the JFK assassination. My parents lived through the Challenger space shuttle tragedy. I shared with you guys that that was the day Mr. McCarroll was born. There are going to be other events in your life that are September level S, where you're going to remember, I know where I was, what I was doing. Now, I don't know when that day is going to come. As I said, COVID-19 was a pretty uh, substantial event that took place during your life, and there are going to be others. And I need you to understand that the same way that we were able to overcome Pearl Harbor, the same way we were able to overcome 9-11, the same way we were over to come uh, uh, the COVID pandemic, even though we're still feeling the effects of that pandemic a little bit in our modern society. This should teach you that rather than freaking out and, 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 and thinking it's the end of the world, hey, when a tragedy takes place, we can overcome. If we come together, we can overcome. And we can learn, and we can grow, and we can be better for the future. And so I hope all of you will take some time today, maybe in some prayer, reflection, to pray for those families that are still grieving. There are a lot of families today uh, uh, who are remembering the loss of a loved one that took place 22 years ago. Please pray for those families. Um, and please continue to work to be your best self, to be a person who brings people together rather than pushes people away. Because as we've talked about in this class, if this country is not to suffer the same fate as the Roman Empire, if this country is to thrive for years and years, generations and generations to come, we need to be strong, and we need to be together. If we are divisive and continue to push each other away, that divisiveness is going to lead to weakness, that weakness is going to lead to further invasion and further attacks, and ultimately that weakness is going to spell the end of this great country. And so promise me, if there's something you've learned from this class, it is that we need to stay strong and united in order to keep this great thing, this great country that we call home going for years and years and years to come.